Okay. Hello class. Today we'll be learning about the mole. We will be teaching you quickly through this presentation, then we'll be showing you through two fun activities. Make sure you're paying attention because we will be quizzing you on what you have learned at the end of this class period. So, you may be asking yourself, what is a mole? Is it an animal? No, it's not. <laughs> a mole is a system of um, measurement. It's symbolized as M-O-L, and it can count the number of particles there are in an element or a compound. So every time you see M-O-L at the end, you know it's measured in moles, instead of like grams or liters or anything else. So for a quick little analogy, a mole is like counting a dozen, a gross, a ream, or a baker's dozen. Some of these words may not make sense to you, but we all know what a dozen of donuts looks like. The system of counting by moles is set up the same way. The number of particles in a mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. No matter what the particles are made up of, it is always that number. So, why 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd? That's a weird number. Well, this is written in scientific notation. So I guess technically the number would be 602 followed by 21 zeros. But scientists have shortened it into 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd to make it a little easier on them and also the person reading their data because it's a little more nice to look at and a little less confusing. Thank God they did. So, moles and particles. It is important to know how to tell how many moles of a molecule there are. You must look at how many of each element is in the sample. Therefore, if you have two moles of hydrogen and each hydrogen element is one gram, two moles would equal two grams. And that's the same for any element as well. So a mini quiz, how many moles or how many particles are in two moles of carbon? I don't know, Rachel. Well, a walkthrough, we know again that there's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd moles in one, or particles in one mole, so two moles would be that number times two, which in case you didn't get it, is 1.204 times 10 to the 24th. Also practicing that scientific notation we just taught you. <laughs> so, how does a mole relate to mass? One mole of a substance can have a different mass than a mole of another sample. One can weigh more than the other. Carbon weighs more than hydrogen, for example. A mole of carbon would weigh more than a mole of hydrogen, if you were to balance them out and scale them to find their exact weights. So, again, another mini quiz. Oh no. How many grams are in two moles of water? Tell me, Rachel. Well, you know that one mole of water would be two hydrogens, which is two, and one oxygen, which is 16, so one mole of water is 18 grams, but we have two moles, so you do 18 times two, and that's 36 grams. Wow. So that's mass to mole conversions. So, the mole versus volume. Scientists have found a number that relates the amount of liters in a mole. At STP, there are 22.4 liters in one mole. If a scientist is given the volume of a product, they can use this ratio to convert this number to moles. So again, another mini quiz. Oh no. How many liters are in two moles? Tell me, Rachel. Well, like we said, there are 22.4 liters in one mole. So, there would be 44.8 liters in two moles. Yes, there would. For a quick recap, the mass of one mole of each particle is not the same. A dozen bagels does not weigh the same as a dozen feathers. This applies to elements as well. Each mole has 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms or particles in it. In each mole, there are 22.4 liters of gas at STP. A mole is simply not a little animal that digs up your backyard or a mark on your face. It is much more important to the world of science. And um, some misconceptions about the mole are it can mean a lot of different things. It's not just one number, and it's not just an animal, and it's not just a birthmark. It's a lot of different things. Um, moles are an important thing to chemists because it allows them to count.